John here is from an organization called Slavery No More, based out of Southern California. And he's going to unpack real quick for the first 15 minutes of the show what the actual business is of human trafficking and child trafficking and, and the things that we can do as parents, as concerned citizens, and also the, the aspect of a case study that he's actually working on right now, a live case study, an op that he's working on right now. So coming to the show, creating a tremendous light in this dark world is John. John, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? I appreciate you I appreciate you, you I appreciate you coming on, man. So let's jump into it. What's what's the case study you're working on right now of, of in, in human trafficking? Well, to give you a realistic feel, I mean we're working on um, sex trafficking cases, labor trafficking cases. They span uh, the nation. We're working on national networks, regional networks, uh, and in some cases very small localized instances of of traffickers and Man, they span every people group, Asian, Hispanic, Black, Caucasian. And um, you know, a real notable fact is 80 to 90% of them, people are being trafficked by their own people group. Wow. Um, it, it seems like people would be exploiting others, but they're exploiting their own. And, and that's just a, a real uh, difficult, you know, grievous thing to see happen because um, you know, a lot of those communities, uh, they, need a, they need a hand up, not not somebody exploiting them, especially their kids. So um, we have a lot of cases that are minors. Um, as recent as yesterday, another one came in. And, uh, you know, those are just really, really heavy. But um, we're just driven by the plight of the of the one victim. Yep. Um, in good instances, there's there's groups of them that we can, can locate and, and free. But um, uh, there's no shortage of traffickers. And they're being very aggressive. We our cases span all 50 states. Whether either a victim or a trafficker that we're after is in all 50 states, and uh, we have a network nationally that uh, just can't keep up with the demand. Wow. So uh, it's a real challenge. Is there an area you wanted to drill yeah. down on? Yeah. If, for example, what, what's that situation? You know, we'll leave out the city and state. You know, because obviously you're in an app mm-hmm. right now. But um, there's a situation there where the young teenage girl was being trafficked. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah. um, and can, 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 can you take it from there? Yeah, so she was trafficked starting when she was 13 years old. Um, she um, is now 17. She has been exploited for years, passed from pimp to pimp in some instances. Um, and she was doing the work, uh, offering sex services all day, every single day, at the threat of her mother and her little daughter meeting either the same fate if she didn't cooperate uh, or being killed. And um, the very tragic extension, and hers isn't rare, unfortunately, is that for when she finally reached the end of her rope and she couldn't do it any longer and she wanted relief from day in, day out, constant abuse, they said the only way to do that is go get us some other young girls. Mm. And uh, she, she actually did it and um, participated in luring them in, uh, pinning them down as they injected them with fentanyl uh, and listened from the next room as they gang raped her to desensitize her to the life ahead. And um, you could tell that it shredded her, uh, but that's how bad she wanted relief. So I share that difficult story because so often we can dismiss the victim as, oh, maybe they made a decision to deserve it. Maybe they um, got used to it. Maybe they wanted it. Um, that's not the case. Sure. So, um, unreal, yeah, man. it's a very, very un- unreal situation, but boy, it's not rare. It's actually a pretty typical case. What? And so to just bring home the, the coercion, um, that threat, um, not too many months ago, uh, her mother showed us a picture on her phone that was texted to her by the perpetrators who had taken a selfie of themselves at her front door wow. and sent it, sent it to the girl and told the girl to send it to her mom to say, Hey, we're right here. As soon as we need to, you know, pull the trigger we're we know where you are. So, um, you know, I think we can all say, boy, if that happened to me, could, wouldn't I do the same to protect my family? For sure. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, that's indicative of a lot of cases, and it looks different in labor, you know, labor trafficking or sex trafficking in different milieus. But the coercion is still the same. So the crime is force, fraud, or coercion, 
to make someone do something they wouldn't otherwise do. And uh, it's amazing the extent uh, that these traffickers get very clever at applying coercion to get people to do almost anything. Unlike drug dealing, right, in, in the drug trade, mm -hmm. um, you're either, you're, you got a corner boy or you're, you're, you got the drugs on you. Uh, human traffic mm -hmm. is not the same. I mean, um, pimps don't have to be on a, don't, pimps don't have to be on the street uh, uh, looking over um, their, you know, their prostitutes, right? They can be text messaging because at the coercion you just mentioned, they don't have to be looking mm -hmm. over because they know where your mom and dad live. They know where your younger siblings live. Right, so they're threatening mm -hmm. that. Um, so how how come more human traffickers don't get arrested? How come there isn't more focus in on this 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 horrendous uh, crime that uh, a lot of people are struggling with? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, at the end of the day, it's be, it's largely because it's a hidden crime, so we don't see it. If we saw it right outside our front door and recognized it, uh, we would probably ask for for political change. Um, but as it is, law enforcement is grossly understaffed and under-resourced to pursue a crime that actually takes proactive investigation to look underneath what you're seeing and go in search of. Um, literally 1% uh, of victims self-report. So at the end of the day, 99% of the victims, their only hope is somebody actually comes looking for them and knows where to look and looks past the fact that in most cases, they're just hidden in plain sight. You know, if a, if a law enforcement officer makes a traffic stop and there's a gentleman inside uh, or a female with a number of other girls, uh, they don't might not think twice. They must all be friends. They don't ask questions, write them this ticket for, for speeding and, and uh, off they go. But if they know what to look for for indicators of trafficking and they know to maybe separate the girls from the driver and ask them some questions, are you OK? And uh, know the indicators that I would suggest everybody, there's so many great resources online to go study. What are those indicators of trafficking? Because the public can be a great source of tips for law enforcement. But if uh, you don't know what to look for, it's hidden. And if it's hidden, uh, a district attorney, a mayor, they don't have any motivation to go uncover it. That increases their crime stats in their, in their city, makes them look bad in some cases, right? So it's better to just leave it alone. Um, and it all, also takes a lot of resources to go investigate. So it's easy for them to look away. Um, I'll, I you know you're a money smart guy. You guys are all about numbers. So I'll download some numbers on you to blow your mind. In 2019, which is one of the last reliable years before COVID uh, started to change the landscape on some crime stats and before the most recent evolution of um, the, uh, agencies not reporting their crime stats to the FBI because they, they don't want to participate in racial profiling of, of criminals. Um, so go back to 2019, uh, 1,883 arrests for sex trafficking. 87 were cleared out, so that's 1,008 prosecutions. Well, that's whether it. you're looking at the U.S. Department of Health study or the University of Pennsylvania study that say on average about 280 plus thousand uh, minors are going to be victims of sex trafficking each year, uh, that's a 0 0.3 prosecution rate for sex trafficking. But here's the kicker. No crime is calculated in the same manner. In other words, that, that's if you were prosecuted, if you were trafficked for a year, you're one. But they're not, they're, they're trafficked all day, every day, right? Sure. Yeah. So if you took the actual number of the instance of the crime, the actual number of the times that a trafficker forces a, a young person, a girl or boy, to have sex against their will, um, the, the actual prosecution rate is about 0. 0.000. What? That's that's five ten thousandth of a percent that a trafficker, a, a, upon every instance of choosing to traffic a girl or a boy again, each time they make that decision, it's a new criminal event. Yep. If you're calculated like any other crime, uh, the chance in that instant that they'll get arrested and prosecuted is five ten thousandth oh, no. of a percent, given the numbers from, you know, pick your reliable source that I use. So yep. um, the calculus for the trafficker then is, I'm not gonna pay for this crime. It's incredibly lucrative. I can make just as much as I can by selling drugs and not get busted for it. Cause nobody even knows I have it. If I have drugs on me, you know, I'll get yep. busted. Dog will sniff it out. Mm. Uh, they'll have some means of detecting it. If I've got a person with me, nobody knows that we don't have a good relationship yep. and the coercion keeps the victim in check. So very low risk, 
very high return. And uh, that's why it's the second largest organized crime in the world and the fastest growing. Un Unreal. Uh, Milton, so, you got a question? Yeah. So, John, I have, I have a question for you. You know, we think of traffickers. You know, we, we look back into the 70s and 80s and we think of pimps. Mm -hmm. You know, you know yeah, pimps yeah. Are driving around in those old caddies and sure. suited and booted and canes <laughs> and all that. We, that's, what we, yeah. that's what many people think about. But nowadays, it could be anyone. It could be anyone involved in a criminal network, like in, in the cartels and in, in the mafias. It could be even family members uh -huh. or guardians who are involved in this, friends and peers. You know, uh, these online predators who lure, lure young teenagers, boys and girls, mm -hmm. you know, to, to lay with them, to go yeah. away with them for a while. You know, it could even be corrupt officials. So my question to you sure. is... Knowing that there's now a broad span of who can be involved, how do we go about identifying the individuals, the individuals who are actually involved in recruiting children, young girls, young men for sex trafficking? Yeah, that, that too is a great question, and it's uh, multifaceted. So, um, you know, we're work a case recently, and it is ongoing with um, minors who've been brought across the border, so they're very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, nobody's looking for them, and they're working at a commercial bakery, uh, working at a linen processing facility around heavy machinery, um, working in all manner of milieus. People might think of, oh, the picking uh, agriculture, you know, out in a field, uh, picking produce. Um, well, no, they're in actually businesses and from uh, hospitality to restaurants to nail salons to, again, manufacturing facilities, uh, service uh, facilities, um, selling things on the street, door-to-door -door sales. So here's the point. They're in every milieu where a quote-unquote business person wants cheap labor. And oftentimes they'll get that from a labor contractor so that they're a step removed from actually recruiting them and they're managed by the labor contractor. And so they're everywhere. And so how do you find a victim everywhere? You have to know what a victim looks like. Mm. And so that, that is back to the indicators that I was discussing earlier, and that's pretty in-depth training of everything from um, wounds, uh, signs that somebody might have been restrained, signs that somebody, um, a person isn't carrying any possessions. A person looks like they're utterly deferential or controlled by somebody that they're with who speaks for them all the time. Um, people who look malnourished or underrested or abused in some way, people uh, in a group setting who look nervous, uh, people who don't have the normal possessions. If you see a, let's say, a teenage girl without a cell phone, how often do you see that? Sure. Yeah. Well, ne you know, never. That, yeah. that jumps out at, at you, right? At all. Yeah. And um, so there's just so many. And, and I think the biggest, the, the clearest way is something doesn't look right. And I think that's when they say, if you see something, say something. That's true in the human trafficking world is if something just doesn't look right, stop and take note of how that person is uh, interacting with the people around them. And um, you, you might be surprised at the indicators that will really stack up fast that that person might not be in control of their own actions. One last thing before I let you go, uh, John, uh, let, let me ask you a question about um, – what can we do as concerned citizens? What can we do policymaker wise? Um, uh, uh, who, who's who's um, whose phone do we need to be calling? Who do we need to be petitioning? <laughs> who, who where do we make the noise? Yeah, uh, great question. And so, you know, it's an it's a, a unpopular response to say that the biggest need is resources because it takes resources to go out and initiate the investigations that are going to lead to traffickers getting arrested sending a deterrent message in a community, and it's gonna to lead to the rescue of the victim. So primarily pick your anti-trafficking organization and support them with the resources they need to go out in the community and do the work because law enforcement is uh, grossly understaffed to do it. But that is then that next thing we need to solve. Call your, your mayor, your state representative, your national representatives, um, you know, every great social movement in history has has happened because public intolerance rises to a level where people say no more. Yep. And there's a point where politicians will respond and allocate more resources to investigations and they will uh, pass laws with tougher sentencing. That's another one. There's sentencing uh, guidelines now that are being loosened yep. around the country and yep. people set free. All that does is embolden traffickers. Yep. So uh, last week, Biden's- and 
Pardon? Go ahead. Yeah, last week Biden's uh, Department of Justice, they removed human trafficking as an area of concern. Removed it from the list of areas of concern, to your point. Yeah, yeah. tragically we could talk for hours about yeah. the number of instances around the country where that's happening. So yeah. everybody, know, be active in your community, talk to your representatives, and mount, you know, you everybody's part of groups. Yeah. Mount up your teachers, parent teachers association, mount up your church, uh, mount up whatever group you're a part of, and have them all in numbers, yeah. you know, crash your, uh, um, not debilitate, but uh, call uh, <laughs> with fervor, uh, email call your yeah. representatives and let them know that you actually do care about this. Yep. And if we can get a groundswell of public discontent to rise, uh, then they'll start allocating the right resources, change the laws and send a deterrent message to bad guys. So, um, you know, all you have to do is stare one victim in the eyes and that haunting thing will never leave you and you will not be able to disengage. So yeah. um, I encourage everybody to get involved before it actually uh, becomes something that, that ha you know, impacts you directly. Much, you much better to get on, get on uh, the train early yeah. and uh, we've got to turn back the tide because we're going backwards right now and we need everybody on deck. 100%. 100%. So... John, I appreciate you for dropping in real quick, and then uh, we'll make sure we set up that day for next week and we'll unpack this much more because I want to get into more specifics and, and why, you know, I, I want to talk about the money aspect of this uh, for next week too as well. So, John, appreciate you for jumping on here on the Millionaire Goals podcast. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah, pleasure. Salute. Appreciate it a lot. Continue success. Yeah, and by the way, we, Take we'll, care. we will have a link for everybody that's watching this podcast in the description, the video description, to contribute to the Slavery No More organization. We'll put the link in the comment section below if you would like to support and contribute resources for uh, for John and uh, his slavery no more operation. So, so if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.